All right, so let's take a look at all of the pre-sliced files that came on the A1 Mini, and we can also compare them to some of the prints that came off of the X1 Carbon. Starting off, we have three flavors of Benchy. We have a speedboat test, which is trying to achieve the fastest Benchy possible at the expense of some quality. So you can see definitely some issues in here. There's some gaps. This wasn't the highest quality filament, so that may have been part of the issue, um, but comes out really quick, about 13 minutes, um, which is quite impressive. And then you have a regular Benchy, which is sliced for a little bit more quality. And you can see we're not getting those same, same issues. I know this isn't a one-to-one -one comparison since they're two different filaments, um, but it's just a regular Benchy. And then you get a third one, which is this th multicolor, three-color Benchy. That I've done in this pink, blue, and white. And you got the little purge tower that gets produced with it. And you also get some little poops that come out of it too, just during the, uh, the color swaps. You should have only got two out of this one. This is just for example, most of this came from the other panda print. And for comparison, this is the bamboo X1 carbon uh, benchy that came pre-sliced with the X1 carbon. So this is probably the most comparable one. And they are pretty close. Next we have these vases. So you have the blue one, which is off of the A1 Mini looks very sharp, very clean in this blue silk PLA. And you have the orange one which came off of the X1 Carbon. Very similar uh, finish here. These are the dual color bolt measuring tools. On the left, we have the A1 Mini in the silver and blue and the X1 Carbon in black and orange. And you can see what that dual color print comparison looks like. Next, we have the bamboo scraper that comes included. So this is off of the X1 Carbon. And this one came off of the A1 Mini. With the holder. You can see a couple little zits where the, uh, the Z seam happens and that's just kind of indicative of uh, silk PLA. Wherever it stops, it's gonna create these little artifacts, unfortunately. Now this is one of the only failures I got when printing all the pre-sliced files from the A1. This turtle is meant to have some little clips that hold it all together and sandwich it, like this one from the X1, um, but they got lost while printing on the A1. And I think these are some artifacts remaining from those little pieces, but I came back to the build plate and there was nothing, nothing to indicate where the, uh, the clips are. So I can't actually put this one together, which is a bit unfortunate, but the print outside of that looks very nice. And the little squishy bit does work. And we have these little scrapers, the blue one off the A1 Mini and the orange from the X1 Carbon. You can see this has been used, to clean up some resin and cured and stuff, but. Looks pretty good off both those printers. And then you have these little puzzle pieces, which again are very comparable.
of this hexagon organizer unit that also came with the X1. I just can't find my print that came off of the X1, but here you can see how smooth the walls are coming off the A1 Mini. Couple of gaps in there in the walls. And some zed seams hiding in there. But it's not visible from the outside, which is kind of nice. Now we can move on to all the prints that are original to the A1. We have this pan flute that actually ran out of black filament near the end and switched to the silver. So the A1 Mini with the AMS detected that automatically, stopped the print, let me feed in a new set of filament and just keep on printing. And that looks pretty seamless, which is pretty nice. Don't really have any musical talent, but that's what that sounds like. Then you have this little piece of NASA fabric, so all those intertwined little pieces. This printed pretty well for the most part. There was one linkage that I saw didn't quite make it. There's this one here, yeah. So that one broke off during printing, but for the most part they all made it through, which is pretty cool. Then you get this chip clip, which is a really nice design actually, and it's got this, this cam to keep it shut. So you put whatever you're gonna fasten closed here and then you tighten down the cam so that's locked onto my finger currently. And then you have this color swatch holder. So it allows you to print out these color swatch files and then just fill your grid with all your different filaments and keep those on display. That came out pretty nice. Some artifacts on the top, like the top layer with the silk PLA I find doesn't turn out very well on the, uh, the A1 and on the X1. And we have this little, this little flying propeller unit that you have to assemble a little bit. So looks like you just throw that in there. Oof, that's quite a tight, tight fit on those threads. doesn't quite go in there all the way. It looks like a nice model, but I can't quite get it in there. Let me find a screwdriver to try and jam that in there. Looking so hot, should have used one with a larger blade, but that's unfortunate. Might be able to <laughs> all right. So we're still a little loaded up if you. Tip it towards the front, jam the rip cord in there. That keeps this portion sticking out the front end. And then, hey, there we go. That just flew about three feet in the air across my office here. So 
So that would have been nice if these threads turned out. I didn't just destroy the uh, the screw end there, but that mechanism is nice. And last but not least, we have this multicolor panda. So this multicolor panda, as with all multicolor prints, comes with a, a good amount of waste um, compared to the actual print. I'll weigh these and put the weights on the screen here for the waste versus the print itself. Um, but I'd have to imagine that it's pretty much a one-to-one -one ratio, if not a little bit worse. Um, the quality is great. Like you still have some great distinction between the colors. Um, there's really no bleed between the pink and the white, especially looking at these pads and these claws and stuff. Um, same thing with the blue in here, very distinct color change. It's just a little bit unfortunate that it comes with all of this waste. Um, while we're on the subject of the waste, I'll just show you what these little poops look like. And for comparison, this is a poop off of the X1 Carbon. Both of these are 0.4 millimeter nozzles. Um, so it does feel like the, the X1 makes considerably larger poops, but I'd have to weigh them um, between two different prints uh, just to give you an actual accurate representation of what those are, but that's just a subjective showing you what the sizes look like. And the last bit of waste that we get on these prints is the purge tower. So this is the purge tower that came off of this print. It would just sit on the print bed beside it and between each color change um, and each layer, it's gonna have to go and purge some material. Um, so basically to get this print, you have to do the purge block, your purge filament, and every single print, regardless of if it's a multicolor, it gets a tiny little purge strip, which is inconsequential uh, in comparison to all of this wasted filament, but you would have a little strip at the front of your build plate also. And here's the panda with all those brims taken off. Let me know in the comments if there's anything you'd like to see printed on the A1 Mini and I'll be sure to throw it on there. A printer that's printing is way better than a printer on standstill, so uh, let me know in the comments what you'd like to see this thing print, and I'll try and throw it on there for you. Hope you liked the video, and I'll see you in the next one.